Come alive, come walk in my counsel. Come alive, come walk in my ways. Come alive, come soak in my presence. Light and life, pure delight. Come alive, come walk in my counsel. Come alive, come walk in my ways. Come alive, come soak in my presence. Light and life, pure delight. Bursting forth with life unending. Now, what do you call people who believe in things that are not there? The answer is mad people. Because although the Bible says that faith is a gift, it is not the gift of stupidity. You put your trust in someone if you are sure that they are real and true. Faith is always a response to truth and reality. God shines a light into this world. 
so that we can see truth, so that we can see reality and respond to it. Faith is the only appropriate response to a God who is real and who has revealed himself and made himself known. Greetings and thank you so much for tuning in to Living Strong today. Uh, it's a brand new year. It's always a joy to be able to come together, spend some time in the Word and prayer as we look ahead for uh, what this year has in store for us and what God wants us to journey in uh, with Him. We want to begin this year uh, by spending several weeks uh, on the subject of faith. It probably is a familiar subject to some of us. We've heard teaching and we've studied the Word of God concerning faith. For some of us, it may be new. We may not have received uh, a teaching or instruction from God's Word concerning faith. And so this will be a, a, a very good way, not only to get into the Word of God on the subject, but also even to begin the year ahead so that this year, 2019, can be a year where you grow from faith to faith, to higher levels of faith in God. So on the program today, as we just begin to talk about faith in God, I want to just share uh, an assortment of ideas or truths, uh, concepts from the Word of God concerning our walk of faith in God. So uh, we will just be presenting several different thoughts, ideas, insights from the Word of God concerning faith on this program. And then as in the, in the weeks to come, uh, we will delve further in on how faith comes into our hearts. How do we build faith? How do we exercise faith? What would be the outcomes when we walk by faith in God? Now, uh, faith really is, is so important. Uh, it, 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 faith is what connects us with God. You see, we are people. We are spiritual beings. We live, uh, we have a soul and we live in a body. Uh, so we are tripart beings, spirit, soul, and body. But predominantly, uh, uh, most of the time, we are uh, engaging with the natural realm. You know, we are living uh, our, our emotions through our mind, our emotions, our will, our intellect, our reason. We use that a lot. And then, of course, the body, what the body, what the body needs to rest, it needs to feed, it needs to go out and various things. So we are engaging in this natural world so much through what we, uh, through our reason, through our mind, our emotions, and also through the body. And yet, the, now, how are we going to connect with God who is spirit? The Bible tells us that God is spirit. He's a spiritual being, if you will. And we are here, live, we are spiritual beings, but we're actually living in the natural world. How, how are we going to connect with God? Faith is required. Faith is what enables us, even though we are living in the natural world, to connect with the spiritual realm and to live out of the spiritual realm in our natural realm. So faith is important. Faith is what connects us with God. And the Bible teaches us that faith is required if we are going to live pleasing to God. A uh, very well-known verse on this, Hebrews 11 and verse 6, the Bible tells us, that without faith, it's impossible to please Him. So that he who comes to God must believe that He is and that He is a rewarder of those who dil diligently seek Him. So the writer of Hebrews is telling us it's impossible to please God if we are not living in faith. If I'm not move moving in faith, God is not pleased. So uh, if I have to come to God, I must believe that God is, that God exists, and that he also is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. God responds to the diligence of our seeking him when we pursue him intently, when we pursue him fervently and passionately. God rewards that kind of uh, seeking him. Uh, and, that's, and, 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 and Hebrews is saying we must have that kind of faith that God is and that he is a rewarder for those who diligently seek him. Now, the Bible kind of faith is not some technique, it's not some method, it's not just something we're trying to do. The Bible kind of faith is a faith in a person. 
Our faith is in God. Our faith is in the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible tells us in Mark 11, verse 22, Jesus said, have faith in God. Literal translations would say, have the faith of God or have the faith from God. But essentially, God is the anchor of our faith. Have faith in God. Or in Hebrews 12, verse 1 and 2, it says, looking unto Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. So Jesus is the author, that is, he is the originator, he is the source of our faith. Our faith comes from him. He is the beginner of our faith, and he is the completer, the perfecter, the sustainer of our faith. Uh, so Jesus, he says, look to Jesus, because our faith is based on him. Our faith comes from him, it's because of him, it's in him. And uh, our faith is based in, is, is in a person, it's in the Lord God Almighty, it's in the Lord Jesus Christ. And therefore, faith is based on a relationship with God. You know, faith, again, like, like, like we are emphasizing here, faith is not just a technique. Uh, it's not like a certain buttons you press and things happen. No, faith is based on relationship because faith is, based, uh, faith is in a person. It's in God. You, you're believing God. We are looking to Him, yet trusting Him. So faith is based on a person, therefore faith is based on relationship. The stronger that relationship is, the stronger your faith is. And, 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 and we will talk about how faith, how that relationship is strengthened to the Word of God and to the work of the Holy Spirit. But faith is based on relationship because you know Him, because you know who He is, because you know what He has spoken. Your faith is not strong because your faith is in the person it's when you get to know God, that God cannot lie, that God will not go back on his word, that every word that proceeds out of his mouth will come to pass, that God's nature is, is God who is healer, he's deliverer, he's provider, he's a miracle worker, he's, he's bigger and greater than any situation. When you know him, when you have that kind of relationship with him, then your faith also grows and faith also becomes strong. So faith is based, is in a person, and faith is based on a relationship. Now, another important insight concerning faith that we see in Scripture is that faith is a way of life. That means this is how we are supposed to live. Everything we do, we do it out of faith in God. That's the way we are supposed to live. Look at these Scriptures, for instance, in Romans 1 and verse 17. The just shall live by his faith or the just shall live by faith. So the person who is in right standing with God, who is in a right relationship with God, he's going to live by faith, is what the scripture is saying. Second Corinthians 5 and verse 7, the Bible says we walk by faith and not by sight. Meaning that what, how we live our life, it's all going to be by faith. Now, that does not mean we will not use our mind or our our intellect. No, God gave us of a mind. He gave us a capacity to think and reason and understand. And so we are going to use our mind. And we have to use it. God gave it to us. Uh, the mind helps us connect with the natural world. And so therefore, we are going to use our mind. We're going to use our body. Uh, we will definitely be in, uh, uh, engaged in our soul and our body. But while we are doing that, there is something that predominates everything else. There is something that supersedes everything else, and it is our faith in God. So to the just, they live by faith, and their faith in God is more important than reason, than understanding, than intellect, than what the natural senses, five physical senses tell us. Our faith in God supersedes all of that. We are not in denial. We are not denying what our five physical senses tell us. We are not denying what reason, understanding, and intellect will tell us, but we are saying something supersedes it. It's our faith in God. And because of that, there would be times when faith may be opposite to reason, or faith may be opposite to what our five physical senses tell us. And that's when the just live by faith. That's when the just choose to go uh, do things because of faith in God which may be contrary to reason, which may be contrary to our five physical senses. And so the Bible tells us that this is a way of life. So faith is not just something I do momentarily. 
or I do at certain points in time, you know, when I have a problem, when I have a difficulty, or when I need to answer, get a, a prayer answered, or I want to receive something from God. Yes, you ex- do exercise faith in all of those situations, but faith is not uh, something we live uh, in isolated moments in life, but faith is a way of life. This is how we live every time, in all things, in every circumstance, in and out of trouble, or in and out of difficult, doesn't matter. When things are good, when things are not good, we live by faith. Another important concept or truth or insight concerning faith is this, that faith is of the heart. Now you find this in Romans chapter 10, verse 10. We'll be coming back to some of these verses again. Paul writes in Romans 10, verse 10, he says, With the heart man believes, and with the mouth confession is made uh, unto salvation. So with the heart, man believes. So we believe in our heart. So faith is of the heart, just like reason is of the mind, or thought, intellect, understanding is of the mind, or just like feelings, uh, or like sensations, taste, sight, uh, sound. Those things have to do with the physical, natural body. Uh, faith is of the heart. So faith is a spiritual force. Now faith does uh, uh, sometimes uh, align itself to reason, meaning we're not saying faith and reason are always contradictory. You know, by faith we understand. That means faith is is based uh, very often on sound reasoning. I mean, it's very reasonable to actually believe in God who created all things. I mean, what else? How how else are you going to account for all of creation, the grandeur of creation. It takes a a lot more faith to believe in certain theories of of how things came into existence and just uh, uh, rather than just recognizing that God created all things. So faith is, there is reason there that that faith connects with. But faith is of the heart, whereas reason is, is, is through our mind. Now, therefore, faith is a spiritual force. That means we are living out of something that is spiritual in nature. That is, from a different dimension, we are accustomed to the natural dimension in which we live, but faith is of the heart. It's a spiritual thing. It's of the realm of the spirit. And that's why faith connects us with the spiritual realm, and we walk by faith. Another important concept of faith is this, that faith is like a muscle. It grows as it is exercised. So there are spiritual things, spiritual capacities that we can build. Just as in the natural, we build natural capacity. So in the natural, for instance, if somebody wants to build stamina so that they can run longer distances, what do they do? They have to start where they are and they have to keep working at it, keep working at it, and they develop endurance, they develop stamina so that they can run longer distances. Or in the natural, if somebody wants to build up their uh, physical muscles, what do they do? They have to work those muscles, work those muscles. Of course, you feed it, you work it. You feed it, rest it, work it. You feed it, rest it, work it. And the muscles keep growing and building uh, to their uh, maximum capacity. So similarly, faith is of the spirit. It's a spiritual faculty, if you will. It's a spiritual capacity that we carry. And that faith can grow as we feed it, as we exercise it, put it to work, our faith will grow. Second Thessalonians in chapter 1 and verse 3, Paul is writing to the believers in Thessalonica. He commends them and by making the statement, he says, your faith grows exceedingly. Your faith is growing and it's, it's obvious to him. He's able to recognize that their faith is growing exceedingly. So God has given to each one of us a measure of faith to begin with, but that faith can grow. It can increase as we feed it, nurture it, exercise it, put it to work. Our faith can can grow. Just two more insights concerning faith. That faith, there are other factors that influence the exercise of faith. That means faith in the life of the believer doesn't work in isolation. It is interdependent on other factors. For instance, in Galatians 5 and verse 6, Paul says, faith works through love. So for me, for us to walk in faith as believers, 
we must also learn to walk in love. If love breaks down, it impairs faith. If I don't walk in love, I can't walk in faith. They're connected. And so there are other factors that influence our ability to walk in faith in God. In 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 5 through 8, the apostle Peter, he gives us a list of seven other things that we need to keep adding to our faith. He says, and to your faith, add virtue, add knowledge, add brotherly kindness, add self-control. And he gives us a list of things to add to our faith. And he says, if you do this, then you're going to be fruitful. So while it's important to have faith, and while we are spending time over the next several weeks to understand the subject of faith, keep in mind and remember that faith doesn't work in isolation of the life of the believer. It works in connected with other virtues that we also need to nurture in our lives, like love, like humility, uh, increasing in spiritual knowledge. Uh, these things all in influence how uh, our ability to walk in faith. The last uh, insight that we want to present on the telecast today is that our faith in God causes the power of God to be released. That means when we have faith in God, something happens. As far as God is concerned, God's power is released when we have faith in God. And there are several scriptures connected to this, but we will make mention of one. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 11, Paul once again is saying that he's praying for the believers at Thessalonica. And he says, you know, I pray that God would fulfill the good pleasure of his will and that he will fulfill your work of faith with power or with his power. So God completes our work of faith with his power. So when you act or when you work your faith, when you exercise your faith, when you live by faith, when you are operating in faith in God, it says God completes your work of faith with his power. The very power of God goes into operation as you and I walk by faith. And so this, so this is so important. Faith connects us to the experience of God's power. Jesus put it like this. He told Mary and Martha, he said in John 11, in verse 40, he said, Did I not tell you, if you believe, you will see the glory of God. You believe, you will see the glory. You will see what God will do. You will see what, how God will intervene in the situation. So faith connects us to the power of God. The power of God goes into operation when you and I walk and faith. Well, that's all we're going to cover on the program today. We're going to dive further into this subject in the weeks to come, so stay with us. Tell your friends about it. Tune in. Make sure you, you get your Bible. Go back to our church website where you could uh, look at, uh, watch these programs again. Just build yourself up strong in your spiritual life and be a blessing wherever God has placed you. All People's Church Bible College and Ministry Training Center in Bangalore offers hands-on training and preparation for ministering in the supernatural power of the Holy Spirit along with doctrinally sound study of God's Word. We believe in developing the whole person for ministry, emphasizing godly character that's deep-rooted in the Word, as well as showing powerful demonstrations of signs, wonders, and miracles. Admissions are now open for the academic year 2019 for the one-year certificate in theology and Christian ministry, two-year diploma in theology and Christian ministry, three-year bachelor's degree in theology and Christian ministry, short-term Bible courses for three months in Varanasi, UP, from September to December in English and Hindi. For application forms and brochure, please visit apcwo.org slash Bible College or call us at 99-854-548-99. All People's Church Bible College and Ministry Training Center is accredited by NATA. Thank you so much for being with us on the program today. Before we close, we'd just like to pray together and, uh, uh, and then close the program. So let's pray together. Father, we thank you uh, for this time in the Word. Thank you that we could just... Uh, receive insight, receive understanding from your word. And I pray, Father, for the spirit of wisdom and revelation to be released upon our hearts so that the eyes of our understanding be enlightened to God, that we will know the things that are freely given to us by God, that we will know the ways in which you want us to work in, 
that we will be strengthened in our spiritual lives and God that will go up to new levels in our walk with you. Let this be done for each of our lives. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you once again, and until next time, remember, live life the Jesus way. We are in a crucial time in history where the urgency to fulfill God's mandate of reaching souls and making disciples has never been greater and more urgent. For this, we're getting ready to scale up and build APC World Outreach and Equipping Center. This will serve as an equipping center and a missions base using state-of-the-art technology to train, equip, release, and support ministers across our nation and across the globe. In phase one of this project, our goal is to acquire approximately five to six acres of land. That's the first step. In phase two, we are going to set up our Bible college and a media center. In phase three, we will be building our sanctuary where our church family can come together, be trained, equipped, nurtured, and cared for. To make this vision happen, we need your partnership. We know that this is going to take some amount of sacrifice, but remember, every investment you make today will reap great rewards for the Kingdom of God in the near future. You can go to our church website, apcwo.org slash build to impact page and get information on how to make your contribution or make your pledge of what you will be able to give in the months to come. We look forward to your support and prayer. We want to thank you in advance for what you will do to see this vision happen. Together, let's build to impact.